Ambient Show Reviews. This is Jim Scork, and with me I have today Norman Sanso. Hello there. And awesome brownie reviewer Silverquill. Or, as my superhero alter goes, normal guy. <laughs> normal guy. <laughs> You're norm normal, normal man. <laughs> That's right, the most unassuming superhero of them all. They my never special... suspect you. <laughs> my special power is to stand in the middle of a crowd and not be noticed at all. In a crowd, you say, Jason! Jason! <laughs> Are you really making a Kaby Rain reference, Norman? Are we starting that bad? Yes. Really? <laughs> yes. Get out. You are so 2007. Hey, it works. Oh it works. Press yeah, X no, to start it, Giggle Fest. I press X to Jason, then <laughs> Jason gets hit by a car. <laughs> I can be 2007 too. I was alive back then, mm. and somewhat conscious. But anyway, we're not talking about Jason, we're not talking about the PS3, we're not talking about a terrible, uh, overrated video game, we're talking about a terrible, overrated comic! Ah, not really, no, no. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about the My Little Pony 2014 Annual, written by Ted Anderson, with art, art by Ben Bates, uh, colors by Heather Breckel, of course, like always. Um, but I think that before we touch upon this one, I'm pretty sure people are wondering, guys, why aren't you talking about the 2013 annual? Uh, well, I think Silverquill can put it very easily what the 2013 annual uh, is all about. Right, Silver? Meh. That pretty really much. Yeah. <laughs> pretty Meh. yeah. That is, I am, I am with Silver. Uh, what do you think, Norman? Um... I Nobody like the... cares about what Norman thinks anyway. Let's go oh. move on to the next well, one. <laughs> well, we could, to sum it up with more than one word, uh, the fall of Sunset Shimmer, it really did nothing new with her character. It really was just Celestia's explanation given more panels. She was selfish. She fled Equestria. She's in the human world. Mm -hmm. There you go. That, that is true. That uh, is true. I will say that the, the story focusing on the human five was a better high school drama than Equestria Girls. But ultimately, it's just, you know, things happen. They set the stage for Sunset to break them up as friends, which still makes no sense to me. And you're like, well, okay. Not re I don't really appreciate these characters any differently or more because of this. It just happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a thing that happened. That is how much, that is how you can, uh, you can sum up the comic. Um uh, uh, that is that is nothing else to it. It's like okay, yeah, we knew this happened. We knew Sunset got kicked out of magic school. We kn we knew that she fled to the human world. We knew that the uh, main six in the well, the main five of the human world got separated. But nothing beyond that. I mean, it is it is a very an interesting comic in what it could have been a very epic kind of like uh, uh, touching story. But it's it, it is. And it also kind of use it's also kind of useless. It teaches how, it shows how they get together, the five of them, just so they can get separated again in the movie after Sunset Shimmer separates them. Did they? I thought they were already separated in the movie. No, yeah, no. In what? the comic, they start separated. They get together, then they get torn apart uh. by other uh, by reasons, and then they come together again because of the Wonder Calls, and then. It ends with Sunset Shimmer gathering all that information, and then when the movie starts, they are separated again. And I'm like, what was the point of the comic? It's like, are we friends? Are we not friends? Are we friends? Are we... Friendships, I know the point. Friendships have fallouts. They end up, they start, they lose, uh, uh, they lose trust in each other, and then they come back. But it, not in such a short period of time. There is usually a build up to it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I, the intentions are there, but the execution is very rushed, which it makes no sense because this comic is what fifty pages long, even without the Sunset Shimmer, uh, the Fall of Sunset Shimmer by Andy Price and Katie Cook. Even without that, it's a very long comic. You have no business fuffing around so much, doing nothing. Actually, we have a little bit of that with this annual, the 2014, as well, faffing about with uh, Equestria Girls World, but more on that shortly. Yep, 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 yep. Or yeah, long, and we're gonna right. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna focus on that. Oh yeah, we don't know how long how how long we're gonna take to review this comic. I'm guessing it's not gonna be too long. Remember, remember that the episode where we were talking about the pets comic with no dialogue was almost an hour long. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. true, true. <laughs> uh, uh, that that had gummy talking about screwdrivers. Oh god! How can you not have an intense debate. 
Oh god. But I am anyway. swimming, I'm gonna screw you, checkmate. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that was moving awesome. on. But yeah, uh, we, well, before we go, we go into it, um, I think it's it's only fair that we talk about the elephant in the room, the one thing that people m- were talking about when this comic came out, uh, and you know the the drama that was online, people on message boards going angry, going crazy. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's only fair that we talk about um, why is the mask matter or not a Pegasus in this comic. I don't because know, if you idea. see, it doesn't have wings. You, you know, it. I am like, I'm looking at it, and I am like, so it actually is a unicorn. It is uh, clearly, don't yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh god, damn it! There were people so mad going, ah, it's supposed to be an alicorn. It's like, <laughs> one would think that after Princess Twilight they would have learned, but no. <laughs> well, it just shows Twilight is OP in any universe. <laughs> Indeed. She's even a more powerful than the superhero. Yep, and you can read all about that in my fanfiction. <laughs> oh, but actually, I oh I God. still scratch my head at how poorly Twilight was using magic in that world. It's like, come on, <laughs> t- turn the maniac's mane into an orange. Call it a day. Miller time. But it does explain a few things about that universe and Twilight's ability with using her powers. You know what they didn't explain? Is if the comic went away... Did everyone die? <gasps> uh, that's and, the review for another day. And I've just made it dark. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well. But no. Uh, okay, so this this one comic, uh, I have I have no idea how we're going to tackle it. So I guess the best way to go around will be the usual way. Mm-hmm. Uh, just talk about it as usual. So we should start... Uh, like always, inverted alphabetical order. Silver goes first, then Norman, then me, and then uh, we talk about what the comic is about, and okay. uh, we go in detail on uh, each one of the points. This is going to be a lengthy review, guys. So strap in, get some popcorn, or if you're getting bored, change to another bit. No, no, it's going to don't get do that. There. Don't no, don't go away. Don't go away. Stay with us. Trust trust us. This is going to be worth it. But yeah, let's let's go for it. So silver, the floor is yours. Should be. I spent enough time on it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So a superhero comic, which is always kind of funny in a world of magic. How can you have a superhero? But uh, they do a fun job. Sometimes it's just these ponies seem to have a capacity for combat that your average Joe Joe Pony uh, lacks. The first story, because it's really two of them. The first one I really enjoyed. Uh, it was equal parts Adam West Batman, Powerpuff Girls, and Justice League, all with similar elements and introducing some pretty fun villains. I will say, though, that the standout character, surprisingly, was Humdrum, the character everyone is supposed to not like because he's the useless sidekick, but he's the most common sense and likable of the group. And all in all, it's like the, the tale of, oh, we've lost our powers to the villains is actually a pretty uh, standard staple of comic books in general. I could even point to an old uh, Super Friends cartoon <laughs> that tackled this. But uh, all in all, I just greatly enjoyed it and had a lot of fun. It just took a little while to get used to the color schemes of the uh, Power Ponies having the main six Power Ponies in the back of my head. <laughs> the, the second half, the Maniac going to Equestria Girls, was really just overt commercials for the new Maniac doll coming out. Oh, yeah. In the Equestria Girls line, it's like, oh, here's the maniac. She's in the human world. They are talking about dealing with superheroes in both worlds. And they are both so evil, they are planning to betray one another. <laughs> and now she is going home. Oh, and it turns out it was just Rainbow Dash Equestria Girls reading the uh, reading another comic. <laughs> Utterly pointless. Very meta. Well, you have Very... to admit, though, that the, po- the, the panel where the, ma- the human maniac goes to the pony maniac going, Who are you? Tell me your secrets! <laughs> it's actually rather funny. I have to admit nothing! <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know interrogation techniques are useless against me. <laughs> Unless they actually hurt. However, if, <laughs> if, you, if you're going to... Nah, nah, I, I'll tickle you into submission. With one of Ooh, your nah, feathers. Nah. <laughs> But no, uh, the you have to admit it is. Oh, again, here I go with it. You have to admit you have to admit anything. You're right. But when you are an evil villain, you don't, and you need to make your evil lair somewhere. Don't do it in an abandoned building at street level. Anyone could catch you there, especially if you are monologuing and laughing like crazy. 
<laughs> this human maniac is an idiot. <laughs> uh, Actually, sorry to go tangential, but uh, th- you've got me thinking of an old Ninja Turtles line. Oh, God. Say, they say, there's the villain's hideout. What, you mean that expensive and well-furnished mall? <laughs> no, the abandoned warehouse next to the mall. <laughs> Why are villains always hiding out in abandoned warehouses? Because there are no abandoned penthouses. <laughs> Uh, and there you go. This is bit, I have now referenced the Ninja Turtles and the Super Friends. Yay. Sweet Christmas, I'm old. <laughs> uh, so so am I. So am I. But, well, as for me, I don't know what to say much about this comic. Um, in terms of the Power Ponies, the first part, it's a really average story. I mean, it's been told many times. I hate you, you hate me, or uh, let's hug it out and let's be friends again kind of story. So, yeah, it's been done. And bad guys working extremely well. Too well that eagles will burst. So it happened, and yeah, they fought against each other. Heroes win. Yeah, it's been done. Yeah, but it, it's never been done with ponies. Yep, true that. But the second part of the whole story where Maniac goes into equestrian... No, sorry. Um, goes to the human world and the uh, human maniac meets each other, planning things out, be evil, blah, blah, blah. It was pretty fun to watch and how it was just a comic book read by Human Rainbow Dash. Very meta, very meta. God, if I start talking about the comic, it's like uh, we're going to start to analyze it. Uh, <laughs> because there are some parts that I that I love the comic, beginning to end then again Power Ponies is like my favorite episode of season 4 so uh, I was really looking forward to this one I really wanted to I really wanted to read it and I have to admit it didn't uh, disappoint me it was really good it was really fun and if you want my review in like 10 seconds the rhythm is all over the place but everything else is perfect that is my review of the comic in 10 seconds I like (laughs) and now if you want a more a lengthier Review if you're gonna have to sit through the entire um, the entire uh, the talking as we analyze the comic and we say the things that are good and the things that are bad. Uh, but to me, it's just one of those comics that I go back to every now and then. I reread endlessly, and like th- it's definitely my, one of my favorites. In my opinion, this is this is one of the best that they have produced. In that it does have it, it is satisfying from beginning to end. To me, it is a very satisfying comic hmm. that has nothing that go, it doesn't go to waste and that is one thing that I was so worried I was like with this concept of the power ponies there so many good ideas so many good things that you can do with this uh, superhero setting in this world there are so many ways that you can le- let it go to waste and they don't let it go to waste they take advantage of it and it is glorious uh, so yeah to me, love the comic but if you want to know more about it let's 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 go deep into reviewing it Okay. So the comic uh, starts right away with um, a, a robbery. Uh, apparently, one of the villains that we didn't get get to see in the in the in, in the episode in the Power Ponies episode because there are many villains in this world. Apparently, he is assaulting a museum, and then the Power Ponies arrive to stop him. And right away, I don't know what you guys think of it, but those those three panels, the first three panels, I was looking at this on the Comicsology app. Mm-hmm. And it uh, so it's like if you just look at the visuals and you ignore the the words, this looks like the beginning of a Batman comic. <laughs> I mean, uh, look at those, look at those inks, look at those blacks, look at the washed out colors and uh, and and the use of light and all that. And then, bam! And that's the, the, the last panel. Bam! Pony villain, and it is such a weird design. The sarcophagus has wheels and. And spotlights. It is. It is such a great intro. It's like right away it drags you into this world. Hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Visually, it's Batman the animated series. Text-wise, yes. it's the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the phony Pharaoh or Pharaoh Fetlock. Great fourth wall humor <laughs> on the first page. Uh, he looks like he operates like an Adam West bat, uh, Batman villain. So yes. you're covering three very. You've got the the cheesy, the dark, and the me- median, all in one page. It's very well, uh, very well blended. 
Yeah, you know what? I didn't make the connection with the Adam West uh, 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 show. I used to watch that, and you're absolutely right. He does look and operate like another, like an Adam West Batman villain. <clears throat> All he needs to do is go. Wait, sorry, that was my Dick Cheney impersonation. How dare you? I'm sorry if I do a duck. But no, but still, mm. the, the comic's not bad in terms of visual. It has darker tones than the normal comics because we don't see this much dark in the normal comics. Yeah, not even that, but in the in the normal show, we don't see this kind of dark either. Well, it's it's, it's a show for little kids, I mean, mm-hmm. let's be honest. But um, the, you can always throw some dark into it. Um, but this the, the show hasn't gone... As far as this one is just the, the thing that gets me the, the heavy inks in this comic are just unbelievable. You look at it and you are like, this, "This has a really epic, really, really powerful tone." Just from the way the comic is drawn, it's it is so good. And of course, the, the introduction of the power ponies is just excellent. True, 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 true. It is true when what Silver was saying before. It takes a while for you to get used to the color schemes of the power ponies because you look at that and you're going, "Hang on a minute, the hmm. Maestro's Marvelous doesn't look like Applejack. Hang hmm. on a minute, like Radiance doesn't have rarities colors. <laughs> why? Wait a minute. Why is Sap not with a rainbow mane and blue body? And why does the Mask Horn doesn't have wings? Oh God damn it! Well, how dare you? <laughs> but, <laughs> but actually, the one thing that that shocked me the most was. Handran is not a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Well, it, 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 seems, it seems obvious that they wouldn't make a comic about uh, the main six and Spike, although the, uh, the equestrian copyright system is fair game. <laughs> but it, it is interesting to, see, to note the similarities and the differences, especially Zap's dialogue. Mm. Oh, yes. That is, that is one of the best parts of the entire comic. I love how... Uh, he, he, she speaks like kind of a toned down Shakespearean character. Thor, to be exact. Yeah, well, Thor is not Shakespearean. It's a no, but, but uh, still, it's, um, is the yeah. Well, Thor for... speaks. Is, Thor speaks kind of like that in the in, in the Marvel comic books, and there was always this uh, there was always this debate between fans saying, "Okay, hang on a minute. So Sap can control the forces of nature, but she uses a magic trinket to do that." Um, is she supposed to be Storm from the X-Men, or is she supposed to be Thor? Because that is true. Thor doesn't just control... He doesn't control the forces of nature. He controls the thunder. Uh, he's super strong. He's the only one who can wield the, the power of Mjolnir, the, the, the hammer that was forged inside the, the, the core of a, of a dying star. Don't look at me like that. I'm a nerd. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't remember Thor... Well, kind of, but I don't remember him kind of like summoning tornadoes at will. He actually has to swing his hammer for quite a while in order to create a tornado no, to attack can, his enemies. Technically, he can just summon the lightning by just pointing. Well, his yeah, he can summon the, the he can summon the lightning, but he cannot. He, he has to take a while to do the tornado thing. So ah, yeah, yeah. I, I always I always wonder is <clears throat> is Sav supposed to be Thor or, or Storm? The dialogue in this comic finally uh, uh, settles that argument. It mm. is definitely a Thor. XP. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You forgot one of Thor's powers. Uh, by taking what? off his shirt, he can summon legions of fangirls. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that is not the power of Thor. That is the power of Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Granted to him by Thor's divine abs. <laughs> oh, yeah, my. It, not just fangirls, but, uh, but a few other fanboys as well. Remember? <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the new Thor? The one that's a uh, girl? Obviously, all the boys oh, will be coming sh- home to the yard. Shut up. <laughs> Verily, yeah. my mighty milkshakes bring all the boys to yon yard. <laughs> you don't, you don't mess with with awesome Chris Hemsworth. He's a great, he's a great actor. God damn it! And, no, no, it's like it, 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 but yeah, right away the uh, so the power ponies fight against the against the funny pharaoh, and I don't care if he calls himself. Pharaoh Fatlock. I don't care. He's the funny Pharaoh for me. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> added, added alliterative appeal. <laughs> uh, so right after they uh, defeat him, it has it shows a series of uh, uh, other events where they defeat other uh, villains. Like they they go after this. What's the name of this? Uh, the the one that looks like a like a mime. What is his name? Longface. 
Dis- the dastardly Dis- dispenser of spirit, long face. Yeah, yep. well, long face. Although, although before we before we get too far into the the villains, I do oh. want to say the the Jim Cor- Gordon cameo is very <laughs> yeah, impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's supposed to be Jim Gordon. Yep. The yeah, the, he looks the, like Albert. He kind of looks like Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> That is kind of the thing that threw me off, is that Jim Gordon is not that old. Oh, he like, is in the, the Batman animated series. Well, well, he is, but, well, okay, the last thing Batman-wise that I watched was, um, not the Dark Knight Rises, it was the, the Batman Arkham video games. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. In, in the Arkham video games, he's kind of like a, like a, a middle-aged guy with shoulders big enough to make Mike Hagar look like a pansy. You know, that's um, because of the Unreal Engine. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But no, I was, I like that. I was like, wow, Commissioner Gordon is a badass. I want to play as him in the in the game. Oh, I have to play as Batman. Damn it! Oh my gosh! But no, really. Uh, yeah, the the Jim Gordon cameo. That was a cool callback, though. I like that. After that, we go to them, like you said, um, them yeah, fighting the with other ponies, them uh-huh. fighting other other villains like Longface, uh, the high, high heel. I just love how they introduce every one of them with uh, with a. Uh, a series of alliterations like Dastardly Dispender of Despair or Foodware Filchim Femme Fatale. <laughs> that, that, one, that, that, that is cool. And then it shows them getting a key to the city and <clears throat> showing them that they are a team, that they are friends with each other and instantly cut to their lair. Where, to, oh, their lair, no. Their headquarters because they're the good guys. They have to have headquarters. Bad guys have lairs. Where they are, are of course, not friends with each other. <laughs> Uh, They're thoroughly unpleasant. <laughs> Although, they, uh, they're really angry at each other, yeah. It, but in the scene where the mayor is giving them the key to the city, I, I have to comment on the first panel where the mayor says, whenever there is a crime or crisis in Metropolis, who else would save us than the power ponies? I just kind of envision the police force standing off to the side, grinding their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's... Yeah, you know, th- this this comic is not very PC for the law enforcement. <laughs> yeah, r- r- uh, it it shows uh, the power ponies in their headquarters, which is a tower with a massive double P on it. On it, <laughs> well, um, it looks like a B. Yeah, it looks like a B. Yeah, it's it's confusing. It took me a while to say, oh, that, those are two P's put together. That mm-hmm. is so weird. You need to but overanalyze no, it. <laughs> it's it's I- not very well hidden, really. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like the Fantastic Four building. It's not meant to be hidden. Oh, the Teen Titans building. I've just come off of a year of uh, design school, including typography. And when you have two P's that make a B, you want to know, well, we know what the B is for. They're all bitching at each other. (laughs) (laughs) Power ponies bitching. (laughs) Which, to be honest, it kind of makes sense because when you have to deal with so many egos, you are going to end up having a few fallouts between each other. So oh, true, true. It, it it only makes sense that they start the comic hating each other. It kind of makes for a more inter- interesting and, uh, and fun interaction rather than them being, oh, we're friends, we love each other, this is so great. Uh, no, but this is kind of a more bleak take on the team, uh, on, on the team tropes that we have mm-hmm. seen with the main six in the in the main show. True. And you know what? I, I kind of like this angle because every time when we are introduced to a team of superheroes, we are introduced to them as them working together, being awesome, being friends and whatnot, um, i.e. the Fantastic Four, Avengers, um, Justice League cartoons, and so on. But in this, we see them being awesome and we see them not liking each other. This has been taking years upon years of pressure on them. And putting them into a spot where I hate you kind of situation. Yeah, they're like, they cannot stand each other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although we don't know how long they've been together. This could have just been less than a year. And Meritropolis just has the worst crime rate ever. I don't think so. Because for them to hate each other within a year, that's really fast. <laughs> You've never been to college. <laughs> or, had a, or had a roommate. Uh... <laughs> Oh, it, it, it easily ends up getting uncharacteristically ugly, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. especially in college when there is so much tension and you are like, you are like, I have to, I have exams to get to, I have works to finish, and why don't you just lower that stupid ACDC music? 
<laughs> I am not going to. I already finished my my work. Mm. You should be faster if you if you want to get it done. Yeah. So then they just all get angry. They go their own ways. Hamdran is left alone in the spotlight, feeling kind of ah, oh, this is not the team that it used to be. Power ponies go, <laughs> and and then we cut to the Volcam Asylum. <laughs> Which it is like that. I love I love that name by the way, Vulcan. And this is probably one of my favorite parts in the entire comic, um, because we see the uh, we see the bad guys. They all gather up in prison. We, we see the Pharaoh, the high he- high heel and long, long face join in. Another guy that we didn't get to see, which. Uh, uh, as much apparently is his name. He only speaks in like like mumbles and and grunts. Mm-hmm. And this is, I think, no, I think this is definitely my favorite part of the entire comic because we're introduced to this new super league of villainy, evil, whatever they didn't they didn't settle in a name for it. <laughs> but it is so cool, and it is such a great idea. Uh, and the maniac being reintroduced. What a way to step in. <laughs> what a great concept. What a great look. I mean, I'm looking at this and I am like, this is such a great idea. The, and such an intimidating uh, 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 design because you, you see this villain that in the show, in the actual cartoon, she was very funny and very entertaining to look at, but she wasn't scary. That first time that you see her with the hair, like... Tangled with the chains and the bells and like giant locks on it, and he's like, you look at that, and she has the she has the one hundred yard stare going on. She mm. has an absolute, like, yeah, like she she looks like an absolute insane pony, and it is so good. I am like, I'm looking at this, and, I, and I'm like, I want to take this and put it as a background, <laughs> or like hang it on a poster on a wall or something like oh, that. Yeah. It is such a great, great design. I mean, just. Just for that, this comic is worth buying because I love that image. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, man. And with how she introduced herself or reintroduced herself to the readers, it's like, okay, um, I'm a pony, yet I'm menacing. I'm like the Joker. I'm a clown that is really scary. I'm not scary, boo, I'm going to kill you, kind of scary. So, yeah, this pony here, she's a crazy one. <laughs> And uh, the the stammer in the pharaoh's voice as he greets her shows that everyone's afraid of her, even with her main locked up. They uh, it shows of all the villains, she really is the number one. And anyway, it's good you make the analogy of uh, the Joker because I'm thinking of that scene from Almost Got Him from the animated series, mm-hmm. as the Joker's unveiling that he's about to turn Catwoman into uh, uh, Kitty Chow. Mm-hmm. All the villains are just sort of gaping at him. You realize he's just gone a whole other tier of crazy than your average villain. <laughs> of because... course, the the fact that uh, you have an average villain and an above average villain really mm-hmm. says something about your city. Yeah, but if you think about it in terms of the um, Joker, he has never had a distinctive goal. Like other villains, let's take the Penguin, for example... His goal is always to get rich. With the Joker, he never has a solid goal. All he wants to do is just create havoc and chaos. Yeah, yeah, he just wants chaos. Like I think, I think Alfred in the Dark Knight movie, he put it better than anyone could have when he said, "Some people, some men, just want to watch the world burn." Mm-hmm. And that's that's the thing. What is he doing? He's doing it for the giggles. Mm-hmm. He's doing it because it's fun, which mm-hmm. is the most terrifying. You cannot, uh, you cannot. Uh, uh, reason with someone who is just doing it because it's they want to have a thrill. Like, mm. yeah, the, the, the their goal is not getting rich. They don't want to get in power, no nothing. They just want to destroy. They just want to mangle. They just want to the, to do decimate, mm. desecrate, and they love it. And like and, they, they, they they enjoy it. Mm-hmm. They love doing it. Yeah, and that is why Joker is a iconic villain. If you think about the Marvel universe. There's no one to that level where just randomness, well, chaos, where well, I'm already yeah, scary as it is. Ca- kind Green, of. Green Goblin? But Green Goblin, Green Goblin always Goblin, has a goal. Perhaps, perhaps Loki. Loki a has a bit. goal. Loki, 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 yeah, he does have a goal, but he's having so much fun in the process. Eh, maybe. Like, 
And he too has a legion of fangirls. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in fact, I will say that his legion of fangirls is kind of like he has more fangirls than the Joker. The Joker has a lot of fanboys, <laughs> yes. but the fangirls find him, find him hot. And I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure a few of the other uh, fanboys. Remember, guys, <laughs> equal, equal. <laughs> equal, right? Uh, sure. B- BBC, BBC, yes. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean the these five villains they gather up, and by the way, this asylum is not a very good asylum because the, one of the reasons why you have to keep inmates separate is so this kind of thing doesn't happen. <laughs> but it's break time, people. Yeah, don't, don't you? Yeah. Just, oh yeah, yeah, you do. Well, yeah, I remember yeah, in the Guardian a... of the Galaxy where they all hang out and Groot took them. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Do you, yeah, do you remember that scene in Guardians of the Galaxy? By the way. Hmm. And yep, yep. Rocket is like, oh, I escaped from 20 prisons. I'm going to escape from this one, too. I will agree with people who say, why don't you put that guy in higher security? Uh, that is the higher security. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> I have to rewatch that one. I love, I love Guardians of the Galaxy, though. I agree with people who don't like it. Uh, because I am like, yeah, I can totally see why you don't like that movie. We are digression. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to come off as I hate Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's like my, one of my favorite you movies of the year. Shut up. We love that we love that movie, Norman. I know. Uh, but now uh these five guys they gather up and the maniac is like, Oh don't worry, we're gonna get out of here. I have one guy outside and it's uh no other than Shadow Main. Uh another villain that we haven't been introduced to, but it's kind of like I don't know who this is supposed to be an XP of. I want to kind of say like a villainous version of the Shadow. Um There's a lot then, there's a lot of designs in her. Like she I don't know if she's a male or female, but... Um, it's a she. Okay, she, she has Raven's cape style. Her face mask is almost like the Shredder. And her ability is, well, ninja speed. Basically, another Batman. Or you could say... Ah, phew, I got no idea who's another Batman villain that has the same ability. But yeah, that kind of thing. Karai? Karai. No, wait, that's ninja... Hirari, that's the name. The the so, the knife that serves as sort of a clasp for her cape. Mm-hmm. Basically, it kind of, even though they say that she's the greatest thief, she looks like an assassin archetype. Oh yeah, rule forty twenty. Rule for, that's a new one on me. Forty. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of that one. But yeah, Shadow Man breaks into the prison, releases the maniac's hair, and. The, gives them their uh, outfits and all that, and they they get out and they break out of prison. Prison and uh, what is their objective to break out of prison? Well, they're gonna go after the power ponies uh, to to kick their butts because now they are a group of friends and they're going to work together to finish with them because they realize that individually they cannot hurt them, but if they join forces, they are unstoppable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so it happens that. They break into they break into a building. Uh, the alarm calls. The power point is going to stop them, and there goes the League of Super Villainy, whatever name. And once again, love that. I usually don't side with the villains, but in this <laughs> comic, everything involving the villains is perfect. Because when the power point is going to stop them, they're like, "Aha! We're going to stop you, evil doers!" And then the mass Matterhorn is like, "Oh, fudge," <laughs> which. I'm pretty sure they had to. They, I'm pretty sure they. I can imagine Hasbro looking at that and saying, "Guys, I'm not sure if you should put the word fudge in there. We know exactly what you want to put there." They're like, "But it's cool." But it is. <laughs> and then they cut to the next page, and again, awesome panel, hmm. awesome, awesome presentation. It's like there is no more dialogue in there. It just needs. It just, it just needs the. Hello, of the maniac, and the the other six villains there, and like this is so cool. I love this. <laughs> and well, we see them getting pwned by the bad guys because they work together to achieve a goal. With the power ponies, their goal is just to get paid. Yep. yep. Yeah, they just want another kid to the city and move on to the next task, and that's it. Mm-hmm. But the villains here, they do have a, a a more solid plan going on, and mm. of course, they all get uh, they all get uh, captured, <laughs> they all get defeated. If you realize, each one of them has uh, has them down to their uh, different weaknesses. Mm. Like, yeah, it's like I like how the uh, long face goes after uh, a saddle rager. 
and puts her to cry so she cannot get angry or how they ruin uh, Radiance's outfit so she's like ah oh, no my outfit <laughs> <laughs> or prevent Sap from using her um, her magic trinket <laughs> it's, it is it is rather clever the way that they attack each other <laughs> That's what happens when you have a good plan to take down the heroes. Because, well, if you know their weaknesses, use it. That's what I do in my games. So they uh, they all get captured. They all get taken to the to the villain's lair. Aha! I said it right this time. Yeah, and yeah. they get strapped to a to a rather weird contraption that we don't know yet what it does. And then it cuts to a page that kind of threw me for a loop. <laughs> because uh, it is exactly what Silver was saying at the beginning of the review with the the dialogue, the text, the writing is kind of like like Powerpuff Girls, with the way that it's you can actually hear that in the in the announcer's voice. Oh no! Yeah, what like, is this? Oh no! This device. Nice. What will it do to our intrepid heroines? Those of you with faint hearts may want to look away. And then I was like, oh, this is going to be silly, right? This is going to be jokey. This is going to be silly. They are going to end up with, I don't know, covered in cake or fall into a, uh, into a bat of syrup or something like that. This is going to be so silly. Nope. <laughs> it, it, it is. It, it's kind, it kind of throws you for a loop when it comes to tone. Because it feels like it's going to go for something silly or something ridiculous, but it, then it turns into something really dark. Yep. They, the villains basically develop a machine that takes away your special talent. <laughs> it uh... steals their powers. And it is a really dark scene. Like, seeing how the mask matter horn loses her horn and it grows into the maniac's head. Wow. And, and, and how they, they, they get starting to this they they get, they get distorted and like warped and this is this is really dark even for a comic for a <laughs> even for for a kids comic this is rather you know terrifying one thing i need to address one thing i need to complain if you take a look at the first panel where they're hooked up to the machine they're not tied down or anything that is true they are not tied down <laughs> so I mean, like dude <laughs> well, who knows maybe they they are like demotivated to move away <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but nah. They, th- that's they something... put they put glue on the soles of their hooves. <laughs> oh God, no, not glue. Anything but horrible. glue. <laughs> yes, the bitter irony. <laughs> oh, you want dark? Use glue. Oh God. Well, if that is the biggest problem in the panel, I guess everything else is fine. But mm, mm, yeah, I can see how that can be. Like, uh, okay, guys, uh, why don't you just jump out? Yeah. Why don't you just go away? I I am I completely ignore that because everything else is just throwing me to it uh, really hard. By the way, I love the maniac with a horn. That has to be a thing. <laughs> uh, draw it, man. Draw it. I have been taking over this over this episode. I think Silver is not saying enough. Is not saying enough. Well, I've got no I've got no complaints. I mean, the most I can really say in addition. If we if we talk about little things, and there's always little things, even the greatest films like Citizen Kane have plot holes or inconsistencies at some point. Mm-hmm. Some, is, sometimes from is, the very beginning. <laughs> so yeah, the, well, let's go to the whole thing. The movie oh. was based on one plot hole. Uh, <laughs> but I will say, on the scene where the po- where you see the six villains receiving the power and the ponies, rather terrifying screaming. <laughs> oh I've just seen it right now because my face is right next to. My, <laughs> Uh, the comic Mm -hmm. Philly second and the Pharaoh it looks like the Pharaoh's panel didn't get fully erased oh yeah that I noticed that I noticed that so it's just you see a little bit of overlap like oh my god comic ruined forever worst thing (laughs) what uh, what are you talking about the what part take a look at Philly second's face and the Pharaoh's panel where the ponies are being drained of their power uh, the the maniac is going e he 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 in the fair. To oh, her left. you're right, you're right. There's just a little. That. I didn't notice that before. Yeah, it, comic ruin zero out of ten. Yeah. Zero oh my god, ten. what the hell? This is so horrible. Yeah. <laughs> ruin you know for, what? Ruin you just, forever. You brought it up, and it's the first time that I noticed it. But then again, it it, it goes to show. I wasn't looking at the mistake. Yeah. I was looking at the. Oh my god, this is actually getting serious. True. Oh, one thing I need yeah. to mention. Um, long face is an alicorn. Is he? I, now I haven't noticed if he had, he's had wings. Wait, he was flying, wasn't he? Oh my, yep. oh my god, you're right. And, ra- and radiant. Well, he's ruined forever now. Overpowered. Oh my god. Oh my god, they have to go and turn him into a princess. What the coronation? Hell? Coronation. 
We were waiting so long for a male alicorn, and here you go. A scary mime. <laughs> that talks. Oh, God. Oh, my this God. They can't of... even get the mime right. Uh, these writers aren't even trying. <laughs> God. Uh, it's kind of... They have real image of mimes all over. Oh, God. Why did they do that? <laughs> and now it's mime time. Oh, God. It is true that he's an alicorn. Holy cow. <laughs> Unless uh, unless he loses his wings when turning into a unicorn or whatever, uh, but no, that is that is that is absolutely true. He t- he is an alicorn. Interesting. I didn't think about that before. <laughs> oh my god, that is brilliant. Uh, so I'm trying to do a tally of all the alicorns we've seen in this show now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, uh, we do have we do have that uh, alicorn in in Rarity's episode, the one in Rainbow Falls. <laughs> Rarity turns into an alicorn temporarily, yeah. as well. I'm going to say there have been at least 13 alicorns across this franchise so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. And some of them are being turned into toys. Who oh, knows? But yeah. anywho. But oh, anywho. Wait, yeah, you're right. Oh. 15. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's move on. They're just handing out wings like Dime a dozen now. Uh, uh. M.A. Larson has been shedding way too much of that Red Bull. <laughs> and Celestia is standing off to the side like, I was an alicorn before. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> glasses. Uh, but anywho, after, glasses. after that, we got the whole bad guys having the hero superpower and saying that they're going to conquer the city. Yay! And the power ponies so, cry. Yeah, the power ponies are like depressed. Uh, Sap doesn't drop the 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 lovely Shakespearean dialogue. Alas, who will shield our citizens from villainy in our absence? Oh god, I love how she speaks. It's brilliant. Yeah. It. Rolls of the tongue so well, <laughs> and oh, uh, and so the only one who comes with an idea is none other than Handram, who says friendship. Friendship is going to 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 help us conquer it and and, and save the day. I saw it in a TV show <laughs> that I'm watching. You know what? This 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 um I'm imagining this in my head because Handram is kind of like the Batman because he doesn't have superpowers. So so what? I. I He's the- He's the Robin of the team. He is the one. He's the sidekick that people usually don't like and ends up all, almost always saving the situation, because he's either really smart or he's like, "Haha, I was in the right place at the right time." <laughs> well, uh, he, in this comic, he fell on the Pharaoh's head and conked him out. So right away, I'm asking, "Wait, aren't I supposed to think this guy is useless? He just caught the villain." <laughs> yeah, here, that's, yeah. It's kind yeah, of funny in the in this scene as a. Uh, Matterhorn, Mass Matterhorn, who has had the best expressions so far. Mm-hmm. Just her just her attitude and her droll commentary, but just like Sunset Shimmer and Equestria Girls, uh, or Rainbow Rocks, Humdrum is calling them out on just being jerks. <laughs> You're like, yeah, okay, this is my favorite character. Yep, He's yep. the one talking common sense. Oh yes, what's that Deadpool logo? Common sense is tingling. Common sense. So rare, it's a goddamn superpower. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. My common sense is tingling. <laughs> and, and then after that, after that whole um, debate about your bunch of jerks, Humdrum says, let's do a training montage of friendship. Friendship ahoy! Yeah, and if I, if I could just raise the wrong questions, what the hell are they doing with Saddle Rager? And they want to see, it looks like they're inspecting her back. Oh, it's a it's a falling test. It's a, where, took me a minute where, where? to realize. Uh, yeah, you know yeah, the, oh, like, that one. Okay, that one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you know the trust, trust test where you con- you yeah, fall yeah. backwards. It's like yeah, what are they, they doing? You. It looks like they're they're inspecting her wings or something, or they're <laughs> oh, saying true. take it or saying take it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's a fall test. You can but, leave your you can leave your mask on. <laughs> oh. But you know what this this um this scenario or this scene here. Says a lot about how Mass Metahorn was it? Mm-hmm. How she doesn't trust the group. And well, if you're friends, you should trust your friends. But mm. she also looks like she's the one who's enjoying this the least. Because uh. she doesn't trust them. It, technically, if you if we have to go all over it again, she's kind of the fluttershy of the group where she's a bit shy and doesn't really trust them. Really? I, I, I still see her as Twilight. Uh... I mean, she's still the one issuing orders. She's the one who's she's checking her watch during this thing. She's oh, my bad, my uh, bad. Sorry, not Mass Matahorn, but Fluttershy's character here. Like oh, Saddle the, Rager. Yeah, Saddle Rager. Saddle yeah. Rager. Sorry, sorry. I've been talking about uh, Mass 
Matterhorn that, uh, you know, you see Zap braiding her hair mm. and she just looks like, uh, they're, ha- they're, they're all having shakes and she's checking her watch even though she's not wearing one. Mm. Well, she is. I've got no idea. <laughs> but no, but technically her character here, she's the leader of the group, so she's, so she's more worried about the city by spending time doing this unfruitful stuff the city's in danger, so we need to hurry this up. But she doesn't really understand friendship. And then it shows as they go out to kick some flank. Next page. <laughs> yep, that yep. is brilliant. Oh. I love that. That is a great cut. That is a oh, great yeah. edit. It's like, ha we're gonna kick your ass. No. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, but, but seriously, <laughs> that face, that face is priceless. It's like, well. <laughs> Uh, that, that went well. <laughs> no, but that tells you exactly what happened. Yep. In the in the thing that you don't see is like, yeah, that didn't go well. That didn't yep. go well, didn't it? No, it didn't. Yep. But I uh, know I do like this because even with friendship, you can't solve everything. You now you learn to trust each other. Now you have to work on it. And now you we have them officially tied up. So there you go. Oh my! Earlier, earlier yeah. mistake compensated. Yay. Tied up inside a cage. Up, up, upside down, yes. Oh my. There's a lot of ponies in distress in this comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, and I also find it funny that it is um, Mistress Marvelous the one who saves them. Because, uh, well, it's kind of implied she's the one who saves them because she's the one who starts moving. Because out of all the other, uh, out of all the other superheroes, she's the one without like super ultra mega powers aside from the magic lasso. Mm. Like, she still relies on on uh, like on her gadgets and all that, so mm. it kind of makes sense that she's the one who who saves their lives. So she's Batman. Batman. Uh, uh, we shall not speak of Batman and his. I'm the goddamn Batman perfection these days. <laughs> I'm the goddamn Batman. <laughs> New Fifty Two. What you doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, they um, they have been captured in the in the. Villain Slayer, and the Villain Slayer is still trying to come up with a name for their group, which I find it kind of funny. Up until this point, they have been actually good with each other. They they have had chemistry and and a good mood going on. But then the power ponies escape, and then they start playing mind tricks on them, oh, which yeah. is kind of messed up when you think about it. Them playing mind games with the villains kind of put me off in terms of normally this kind of tactic works with bad guys. Bad guys do this kind of thing, not the good guys. Oh, I don't know. I've seen uh, seen <laughs> Superman play with people's heads every now and again. It's psychological warfare. I know, but it's rare for me to see them do this because usually bad guys play this kind of trick and huh, since the good guys are doing it. Ah, remember in the first issue of the My Little Pony Micro? Yeah. Uh, the Changeling did this. <clears throat> Ah, uh, right, the... yeah. No, in the, no. you're not talking about the My Little Pony Micro. You're talking about the main series in issue oh, yeah, number sorry. two. Yeah, and the, the changelings yeah. start making uh, each other get angry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, you're right. I'm not saying that no, it's it, bad. It, it, it actually does work because we, when you cannot face them directly, you have to use any other kind of technique to uh, uh, to defeat them. And this is the only way that you can do that. Mm-hmm. Just Go as ahead, a side ahead. note, uh, before the mind games began and the villains were debating their uh, their name, still, mm-hmm. I gotta say, for people who haven't gotten their identity down, they've been doing just dandy. Uh, yeah, because here's the thing: like when you build up a team, usually it's not permanent. Like, hey, let's just do this. Uh, let's try and see. Then, hey, we're successful. You know what? We should make a team. So, what should we name ourselves? I don't know. Let's try and see. Let's let's brainstorm. That's what team do, right? Yeah, let's brainstorm. Uh, they are acting like a good team. That is true. Mm-hmm. That's true. But I but I get a kick when uh, when uh, High Heel says I like Alliance of Villainy, and and uh, the maniac is just saying, oh, we can't trot them. Already has a group called the Alliance of Villainy. <laughs> I keep looking at. I keep expecting someone to say, well, I guess we got to go go kill them. <laughs> And I'm going to assume that the sludge guy on the right, the red and black stain, I'm going to assume that's his dialogue. <laughs> go gonna kill, kill, them. Go kill. Gonna kill them. You know what? You know what? I, th- I found the perfect name for them. I, th- I found the perfect name for them. They sh- hence shall be known as the Suicide Squad. No. 
Nah. No. That, do, no. That would be they're serving the law under protest. No, you, oh, you, you don't get it, do you? It's uh, the group, the supervillain group for the DC universe. I know, yeah. I know about the Death Squad. I know that. The Suicide Squad, yeah. I, I also saw the eh, middle-of-the-road Batman movie yeah. about the Suicide Squad. Yahtzee. <laughs> but anywho, here, here we go. Internet digress. reviewer? Internet reviewer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a League of Evil on a higher plane. On <laughs> yes, yeah. we, ru- we ruin it for everyone. <laughs> oh, God. But anywho. <laughs> only one nostalgia critic and the angry video game nerd. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we are not up to their level, guys. We are not up yeah, to their no, level. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, so to the, back to the, uh, to the thing that, it, that the comic is... We were reviewing the comic, right, guys? We were <laughs> yep, reviewing yep. this. Yep. So they keep playing games on each other, and they eventually get to the maniac. And I wasn't sure about the other villains getting mad at each other, but of, out of all the villains that could have gotten angry or that could have gotten crazy, the maniac is the only one that kind of makes a lot of sense. Because she's kind of... You know, in her madness, she's it's kind of justified that she becomes super paranoid. Mm-hmm. And I have to admit, I do. Lo- I, I am going almost through panels here saying, I love this panel, I love this panel. Like, anything with the maniac on it is gold for me because she's my favorite villain uh, uh, from the show. And the, the panel where she starts going crazy, I love how the horn on her head casts a shadow over her eye. Like, you notice that. When she's like, maybe they are planning to betray you. What? No. Or could they? <laughs> like, I love, I love that panel in particular. It's like, that is such a striking panel. That is so good. Wow. This is so cool. I'm sorry. I'm harping on, diff- on small details. But I think that's what, this, what, what it makes this comic for me. For me, it's the details that make mm-hmm. it. And, of course, the maniacs go crazy. And she tries to sub the, the red and black smudge out of existence, to which uh, the Alicor mime tries to stop it, hmm. uh, at the same time that the power ponies are trying to rebuild the, the machine that swapped their powers. And this is something that I didn't expect. Is apparently, Radiance is good with machinery. Well, she has to, because she's almost like Green Lantern. I guess because I guess she makes the construct, she's the most engineering-minded. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want Philly Second touching it. Oh, God, no. <laughs> No, 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 let's not touch that. And let's not, uh, uh, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't let Sap touch it either. She can just <laughs> She's not grounded. Yeah. And we get another but, oh fudge. <laughs> oh fudge, oh yeah. And, oh, before that, uh, before that, that panel, that dialogue from the maniac on that panel, that is, that is, that is not Joker, that is not maniac, that is not even Powerpuff Girls. That is M. Bison levels <laughs> of dialogue. Come back, you cowards! You can't betray me if I betray you first. <laughs> of course. She looks so weepy. She looks super weepy. She looks super teary, and it is hilarious because that is that is like it was written by by M Bison in the Street Fighter <laughs> movie or or in the in the American cartoon. Oh like, yeah. I don't know if you remember one of my favorite yeah, yeah. lines from M Bison in the in the cartoon is like uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I killed your father. <laughs> I killed my father, and you don't see me whining about it. <laughs> it is, it is brilliant. I'm like, yeah, this is so good. You can betray me if I betray you first. <laughs> that, that is absolutely quotable. I love that. Oh yeah, yeah. And of course, <laughs> they just realize that the machine has been rebuilt. The maniac goes, oh fudge. And they recover their superpowers. Mm-hmm. And the day is saved once again by the Power Ponies. And at the end, they all relax uh, watching uh, an episode of My Little Donkey. I feel a little bad for the Pharaoh. He's just having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> if that ain't, if that ain't uh, Dr. Phil moment, I don't know what is. <laughs> And when I was seven, I took my mother's come without asking for it. <laughs> uh, but but with this, with the power ponies learning to trust one another and learning to become, um, learning to trust one another and becoming friends like for reals, um, they are more powerful. And with Hundrum as their team support, yeah, yay. counselor. Team yeah, counselor. counselor. Yep, team it's counselor. a team counselor. Yeah, he's the guy that gets the that that makes the team stay together. Because mm-hmm. if it wasn't for him, 
which it does bring one of the nitpicky uh, issues that I have with this comic. Every time that we are, hear about Hamdram, in the cartoon at least, based on what the cartoon gave us, he mm-hmm. is the power pony's useless and mumbling sidekick well, that... who is always in the way making the power ponies do all the work while he just messes things up. Well, that's he funny. didn't. He yeah. didn't in the, in, in the comic. He didn't. He actually saved the situation twice. I know, but he that's... knocked the fair at the beginning of the comic and then he got them all together when they lost their powers. Yeah. Uh, so I am like, it could have been perhaps better to see him fudge things up once. But technically that's Spike's interpretation of the character because he sees Humdrum messing things up by the comic, but perhaps he's not doing so like that? Or maybe he read a later issue or early issue where he's not that good? Who knows? It might have it might have worked if Humdrum had been captured and the villains forced the power ponies to surrender mm. or will hurt your friend. And then <laughs> evil will triumph because good is dumb. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, and, well, and that's basically the end of the first part of the comic. Although I wouldn't even call it a first part. It's like it's a comic on its own. Mm-hmm. It goes and ends. It just immediately cuts to to the little eight pages long comic uh, where the maniac goes into the uh, into the Equestria Girls mm-hmm. universe. And I think we can leave that we can leave that aside uh, uh, for the la- tail end of the review. For the tail end of the review, but I think we should give our thoughts on this uh, quote unquote first comic first because part that of is the. Comic. the yeah, that is the meat of the of the comic. The power ponies losing their powers and then recovering, recovering them. They go on for the, for forty three pages on on this story. Mm-hmm. So it's only worth it worth it if we um if we say our thoughts on that, like final sure. thoughts, and then move to talk about the maniac uh, sure, sure. going to the Quest of Girls universe. All right. Okay, so, let's do that. Silver first. All right. Well, this this comic is a love song to comic fans in general, superheroes. I should mm-hmm. clarify, there's more than just superhero comics. But uh, it's got a little bit of everything. The dark, the lighthearted, the can't be the serious. Uh, very enjoyable characters all around. And But I, w- I will agree that Humdrum is my favorite of the troupe. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. And even just a little fun for pony fans with my little donkey. <laughs> so, And I agree, it is all, all in all a very enjoyable time i don't know if these characters could hold down a series on their own no a micro a little a four-part micro might actually give us more time to flesh them out and would probably be an enjoyable read but i enjoy but i really enjoyed this this comic Mm -hmm. yeah the villains are great the heroes are great and just like we say a few little hiccups in uh art here and there (laughs) but nothing that could derail it Mm mm-hmm as for me, the art is awesome. Like, James has been talking about the angle, the colouring, the shadow. And I totally agree with him. The art is nothing to look down upon. The writing's not bad. And, well, for a one-issue, 43-page kind of comic, it works. We get to know the character. We get to know their problems. We get to see them fall. And we got to see them triumph. And the bad guys are really awesome, um, all around balance. And this makes me want to read more of them. Like, I don't mind having another annual with them in it. You know what? Not an annual. That this should be a side series. This I... should be a spin-off. That, no, seriously, this should be a spin-off. Totally. They should have like they have the the Friends Forever, the main series. They ended with the Micros. Mm-hmm. They should totally have. A Power mm. Pony side series. Probably. The same but... way that they have these other two. Like, you, you, you have enough mm-hmm. that you can squeeze a good story out of each one of these. Because th- this one comic on its own, it has so much creativity. It is so pretty to look at. And it has such memorable, bre- memorable great characters. Not just with the Power Ponies, but with the villains themselves. There is so much good in this. It's impossible for me not to say... We need a spin-off of the Power Ponies in mm. comic form. I will buy the hell out of it. Mm, true, but too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. No, not when it comes to the Power Ponies. <laughs> I refuse to say that too much of the Power Ponies is bad. No, it is great. And it was great. And I loved every single panel, every single stroke of... Like... Like... 
art and all that. It's like it is such a pretty, pretty comic to look at. It's like I can totally ignore the story and just focus on the visuals, and that is probably the weakest point. The story is not Oscar worthy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Aside from a few excerpts here and there, the writing it's really, really, it it it's. <sighs> It's like, this is so translucent. I can totally see through the writing and ignore it because it is a stall, uh, a stock kind of story. It's like, ah, they steal their superpowers and then they get them back. It's the presentation what makes this comic. And that's why which I like it, it so much. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Which is, it's also true of My Little Pony in general. Most of the stories are very stock and direct. Uh, but we enjoy, we enjoy the presentation, the character interaction. That's where the show's strength lies. The very rarely... Will I ever say what the twist? That is true, but to me, it's the presentation that does it, not the not the actual story. Uh, so that's why you kind of harp for a um, uh, for a for a spin off, because if this was a spin off, oh, oh my! If, if, if this was a spin off, they could have better uh, better writing going on, aside from like you know something so um, something so basic. But yeah, I'm totally up for like seeing more of these guys. So yeah, love this comic. Love it with with, with, with all my nerdy heart. <laughs> well, there's still more of the mania coming in the next part. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, yeah, let's let's fairly quickly talk about this one because there is not much to do with this one either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this I one, like it. this one. I mean, she escapes again. Which <laughs> hey, there's that there's that fine asylum security on display. Well, how many times has the Joker escaped from Arkham? Uh, they should close Arkham down at this point. Yep. Yeah. I will say, mostly, you can sum it up so quickly. Maniac goes to a Equestria Girls world, meets human maniac. They bond, plan to betray each other, go home. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty it, much it? what you have. Yeah, that's pretty much what you have to do with it. Uh, although, I do have to complain about one thing. What? So, the maniac goes through the mirror, and she doesn't turn into a human. She arrives <laughs> as a pony. But, uh, James, here's the thing. Uh, that logic is Equestria Girls, My Little Pony, the cartoon logic. This one is written by a comic writer in the Equestria Girl world, so he would not know. This is just his ideas. No, 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 no. I am not going to accept that because in this Fall of Sunset Shimmer comic that we were talking no, about at the no, beginning no. of the of the review, we see Sunset Shimmer going through the mirror and she actually turns into no, a I human. Mean, but here's the thing. So why doesn't the... No. Oh, okay, go ahead, Norman. Go here's ahead. the thing. This, this scenario that we're reading now in terms of um, Maniac meeting Maniac it's just a comic being read by Human Rainbow Dash so that world's logic is not applied to this one are you sure though? are you sure this isn't an inception reality within reality within reality? (laughs) this is very meta this is very (laughs) firstly I just say Equestria Girls can't follow its own rules so really? to me oh are you kidding? That the, the climax of Equestria Girls. Uh, we know. just broke our own rules. There's no magic in this world. Oh, look, they're transforming. You don't know what an element of harmony does in this world. Well, neither do you, apparently. <laughs> no, and but... now we can use the magic of friendship without the elements. Yeah. I wish the main six had known that when Discord was around. <laughs> I just, yeah. just, no, you... There comes a point where you stop trying to justify and just say, "Guys, you done broke your own world." Yeah, but no, to me, to me, this is kind of a writer's writing. This, so yeah, <laughs> but no, it's very meta. No, very meta, confusing. Yeah, um, um. <laughs> a comic within a comic within a comic. No, but I will say, uh, it really picks up when the maniac meets her human self, oh, and yeah. they're. First, they're screaming in each other's faces and battling, and then almost spontaneously weeping and hugging one another. I kind of like that actually. Yeah. I like the I, I like the interaction between the human maniac and the pony maniac. It mm-hmm. actually there is actually a lot of fun going on there. Yeah. I do. I do now, like yeah, the design. Yeah, you could totally have at the end of the comic something like now available at Toys R Us for only nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> beg your parents for it. We are going to go bankrupt if you don't beg your parents for it. <sighs> but I do like the design of the human maniac. Um, her boots, they're really cool. The, just the basic design of both maniacs, they're really awesome. Well, but that's, that's because you're coming out of a very good design with a mm. uh, pony maniac that is easily adaptable in human maniacs. So. And also, I like how they 
don't really walk with their feet, but with their hairs. <laughs> they got a little portable have... throne. Yeah, it's uh-huh. it's almost exactly like how Doctor Octopus walks in uh, in, Spidey in the Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm just looking at the last page where the, uh, the maniac is returning to the portal, mm-hmm. and that statue looks an awful like like Principal Celestia atop a pony. <laughs> Declaring her dominance over the lesser equi- equestrian breed. No, it is, it is obviously not Principal Celestia. Her legs are not bayonetta sized legs. <laughs> True that. Seriously, I was actually I was watching uh, Rainbow Rocks yesterday night, and I was looking at that and I was saying, "Those legs go no, go on forever." There is like a toll booth uh, halfway through those legs. So long they are. It's impossible. Uh, James, funny that you mentioned bayonetta. I've been playing bayonetta too a lot. <laughs> I don't know if you want to mention a toll booth between the principal's legs. Hey, hey, hey. No, PG, PG. Maybe. No, hey, he brought it up. I'm just saying. I, I kind of did. You can blame me if you want. And I do want. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, aside from this kind of like unneeded attachment uh, to the comic, uh, the, the, whole, the, the whole thing is a very solid, very good fantastic product and I, mm-hmm. I like it a lot and there, there should be more of this god damn it there should be more true true we only have one <laughs> why can't we have like another 100 I don't know because we, we can't have nice things except my more phone. please yeah. more please but 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 in terms of as a whole comic I say that it's worth the payment of well I recently bought it for a friend um, 16 Singapore dollars so yeah oh, it's, it's worth the cash it is worth it. It is worth every penny. So, final thoughts, guys. Well, the, I, I think I, I think that is very solid. But uh, go ahead, Silver, you first. Oh well, I, I think we kind of gave our overall thoughts. I mean, I agree. The maniac, the single on the maniac and the human maniac was just sort of, it's there. The wingless imps comment was kind of funny, mm-hmm. uh, but by and large, it's really forgettable. It's the main, larger story that really sells the comic and is a very enjoyable ride. Mm-hmm. So all in all, a fun bit. And like I say, I'm not sure if a, a spinoff series would would flourish, but just even a four-parter might be fun mm. to see. More, more, more. <laughs> in the midnight hour, he cried more, more, more. That's my conclusion to this, more. With that out of the way, we all like it, right? Yes. Well, I liked it. I'm not going to speak for others. I liked it. You it's super- a fair- it's a fair assumption. I enjoy, I liked it very okay. much, and I like it too. So, James, what's next week's? Next week's is a uh, wow! Look at that! It's a Christmas review, everybody. Oh my! So are we going yeah. to review a Christmas holiday or Christmas special? No, we are not. <laughs> <laughs> because believe it or not, there hasn't been a Christmas special yet on on the My Little Pony IDW comics. Uh, well. At least from uh, at least from what I uh, from what I've seen, uh, no, we're going to be reviewing the very last of the MLP micros. That's going to be the Luna micro, written by Katie Cook uh, with art by Andy Price. So oh, yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. that that is a gift to itself, James. Letting it people is. know how awesome this comic is. But uh, that will be for Christmas. Uh-huh. For today, Indeed. that's the end of the review. Thank you guys so much for listening to us and putting us putting up with my uh, in, inherent stupidity. <laughs> uh, well, I have been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. And I am Normal Man. <laughs> normal away! And then you just walk away. <laughs> See you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye, guys. Adios. Adios.